And you don't have to go through the full program with Not Me SD. No, 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 like no. Dave. So to your point, because your friend already has a gun, if she just wants to learn how to apply for a CCW, right. I do virtual CCW courses every two months where we actually walk women through the process on how to apply for your CCW. So I'm breaking that perception of... Hey, if you own a gun in California, you should have an attorney that specializes in California gun laws on your speed dial. Because if you ever have legal matters that involve firearms, you need California firearms lawyer John Dillon. If you have questions about red flag laws, gun registration, gun transportation, or maybe you just need to know that your guns are California compliant, our trusted firearms attorney John Dillon. John Dillon specializes in California gun laws. Put his number on your phone right this second, 760-642-7150. That's John Dillon, California firearms lawyer, 760-642-7150. So to kick off the interview with Desi and her major, major announcements, I, you know, I just got a, uh, this is a very uh, timely and topical message I got, Desi, um, from Deanna. Oh, I like Deanna. Deanna Hayes? Um, I don't remember That's her okay. last name. All right. It's all good. <laughs> anyway, she wrote uh, and said, happy Labor Day weekend. I received my CCW permit in the mail this past week. Thank you again for helping me. I will feel so much safer now shooting photos at, yeah, it is Deanna Hayes, shooting yep. photos at night. Deanna is a uh, photographer, single woman photographer, um, and uh, she uh, she goes out at night. She does a lot of moons. In fact, like once a week, you know how in KUSI they show a picture when they do the weather? Mm -hmm. Like once a week it's her. They're always using her photos, and she's just an ind independent photographer, but she goes out at night with expensive equipment by herself. She's, you know, single woman. And boom, now she's safe, thanks to not me. So I wanted to read that to you on the air. Thanks, Mike. As evidence of the fantastic work you do as the program director for uh, Not Me SD. So how are you doing? I'm good, Mike. How are you? I'm fantastic. So talk about Not Me SD and what uh, what what how, how do you how, how do you want to lay this out? We got a couple of segments. Yeah, we got a couple of segments. So let's build the suspense. We're gonna <laughs> build the momentum and the yeah. suspense for what we're gonna announce today. Because again, it's gonna be a double whammy, not just one that I had promised. So you know so. what we should do? We should we should make the announcement right at the end of the segment. So let's all well, just, like a little teaser. Yeah, let's sit quietly for ten minutes until the end of the segment, and then we'll make the you know, really build the suspense. So we're going to build the suspense. We're talking about some history. We'll, we'll kind right. of fill That's the time. So That's a better idea. Let's talk about the history of Not Me SD. So Not Me SD was founded back in 2019 and was San Diego County Gun Owners' response to help combat sexual assault and domestic violence in San Diego. Exactly. You want to hear this specifically, how that actually happened? Of course, Mike. This was your founding. I, I read an article. Um, I, was, I was reading an article. You know, people send me anti-gun articles all the time, pro-gun articles too. Um, but they're, you know, I get a lot of uh, look at this article, bah, you know, oh my gosh, you know. And honestly, I can't read them all, but this one in particular really stuck with me. And they were talking about the spike in domestic violence, sexual assault, um, and it talked about California. It talked about San Diego. I really wish I had kept this article because I've searched for it and now I can't find it. But it was a, a thinly veiled blame. On gun owners, of course, it was actually even kind of a thinly veiled blame on on generally people on the political right, um, which I thought was ridiculous. But it was definitely a poke at gun owners, and I thought, okay, we got to do something. Like we got to do something because we're not the problem; we're the solution. And so I decided, all right, and came up with this idea of of doing exactly what we do, and uh, that's 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 where it came from. And to kind of piggyback off of that, Mike, so 93% of sexual assaults are women, right? 63% of sexual assaults go unreported for fear of retaliation and or their partner. Mm. One in three women will be a victim of sexual assault involving physical contact at some point in their lifetime. And Mike, in eight out of 10 cases, the woman knew the individual who sexually assaulted her. One in three women. One in three women. In their lifetime. In their lifetime. That's... Isn't this crazy United, statistics? It's crazy. One in three women in the United States. Is that where they, I think it's the United mm -hmm. States, right? United it's, States. It's crazy. And if you think about it right now, too, I mean, police response times are on an all-time high because they just can't keep enough staffing. And so if you're in danger, like your life is in danger, priority one call, it's a 50-minute response time right now. Five zero minutes. Five zero minutes. That's a lot of minutes. That's a lot of minutes. A lot can happen in five minutes, let alone 50 minutes. Yeah. 
So getting back to the history of Not Me, I mean, I love these you know statistics and the way we can kind of talk about how it founded. So I want to kind of talk about how I came into the picture. So Mike, I don't know if you remember when I met you. It was at a barbecue, actually, at Gunfighter Tactical about four years ago. All right. Haiti introduced me to you and Wendy, yeah. and you guys started talking about this amazing program. You're like, hey, do you want to start volunteering with us? And I was like, yeah, sure, great. So I actually started off as a volunteer. I think it was end of 2019 was when I started volunteering. And then early 2020, you guys saw that uh, there was a need for someone to kind of take a, you know, a bigger role within the Not Me SD program. And you knew the skills that I possessed and the, how amazing I was. <laughs> so, Well, let's talk about that for a second. It, it wasn't that we saw a need. <laughs> we were inundated. Right. We had no idea. When we did the, we did the press conference in uh, April of... 2019. 2019. Yeah, that sounds about right. And I remember thinking, okay... We're going to do this press conference. And if we get a dozen responses, that, that'll that be a good day. You got 150. Yeah, we got 150. 150. <laughs> and we were in it that first year. Um, you know, my apologies to those first 150 women. They did not get the experience. or whatever. I think it was actually more. Yeah. They did not get the experience that you provided. So we were in dire need of someone to help with the program. It was that popular and right. that we were that inundated. So it was about a year into it. Into it, yep. And I came in about early 2020, and when I came in and took over and helped taking, you know, a larger role within the organization, we had 200 applicants that were in the queue. Mm. There was 150 in the backlog, which means these 150 women hadn't been reached out to in over a year. And so when I came in, like, I really had to streamline the process and kind of restructure everything so there was a lot more streamlined to the program, right? And yep. so my goal was first to get rid of that backlog. I mean, to me, that backlog kind of was just sitting there and it just kept taunting at me. It was like, look, there's 150 women that need your help. And so my goal was to get rid of that backlog so we could start helping current people. And so within six months, you remember this, Mike, within six months, we got that backlog gone, right? And so then everything that came through was current. So again, this is early 2020 that we had, let's just say 200 applicants. Mm -hmm. So with each hundred you know, applicant milestone, we kept getting closer and closer and we kept building the momentum for this. Now we don't pay for advertising for Not Me SD, right? A lot of the way we get all of our applicants mm -hmm. is through word of mouth, word of, of mouth, course. Yep. So people hear they had a great experience. I've been going on KUSI a lot, yep. and that's earned been media. Earned, earned media. Earned media is very effective. Very effective. And then, of course, through our shooting socials. So a lot of times when we're at our shooting socials, I mean, 75% of the individuals that are there are women. And, and so I, I think another huge percentage is Dave Stahl. Exactly. That's Dave Stahl <laughs> is a big promoter of us, and he definitely was, loves the organization. You know, I was walking by. I got here early, and I was walking by. He was doing his show, uh, his you know his car show, and he had a, a guest on. He's not in the room. Uh, but he had a guest on. And then I'm walking by, and I heard him pitching to her, not me. I'm like, oh my gosh, like well, this guy's a machine. He's awesome. Dave identifies as an ambassador. He's just, you know, he puts on a wig every now and then, and so he identifies as an <laughs> yeah, ambassador he identifies. when he when he wants to. <laughs> so, and the one thing I also love too is we ha hear a lot about this at our tabletops, right? So we have a lot of great volunteers that are always talking about this at tabletops. So they'll see women walking out of the gun range and, you know, mention the program. And that's a really great way that we both get applicants and ambassadors like Alicia, because the program's not possible unless I have volunteers, you know, kind of helping in the day to day. And Mike, the um, individual that you were talking about earlier, Deanna. Yep. So Alicia actually helped her I've and Deanna. Oh, yeah. yeah. She's a great shot, by the way. So watch out. Yeah. yeah I All wouldn't right. mess with her. Right. But Deanna is one of the ones we've sponsored through the program. So we came up with the 501c3, yep. right? Not well, me, CA. She's a photographer. That's probably why she shoots so well. Yeah. <laughs> but yes, we came up with the five one. Well, well, what was happening was we wanted to make sure that everybody that goes through the program, you know, the program, the program is free. Right. But the guns, you, you know, still guns cost. are expensive. Training is expensive. You're expensive, Alicia. I'm a little pricey. <laughs> <laughs> the well worth every penny, but yep. still. And then, but here's what was going on: we were we were having to go back to the you know the trainers, you know. Hey, can you give us something for free? Hey, can you give us a discount? Right. And it's just not fair. So two things weren't fair. Number one, it wasn't fair that the instructors were the only ones sacrificing. You know, they were the only ones that were giving up, uh, you know, free whatever, free this, free that. Um, actually, they weren't the only ones. And then the other ones were the shops. Yeah. The shops were giving up. Like, hey, you know, they sell this inventory to put bread on their table. Yeah. I mean, that's, you know. So, uh, and then the third thing that wasn't really all that fair was that, People were contributing to San Diego County gun owners for a political purpose, and then 
you know, we were supporting the program, which is great, but we were supporting that program. We realized, you know what, this is actually a charitable act. This is something that betters the community. So people who want to support this program could, could be getting a tax benefit. Right. And so that, that's the part that really wasn't fair, right? So we wanted to take the pressure off the shops. We wanted to take the pressure off the generosity of the instructors. And we wanted to give donors a, uh, an advantage by you know, giving them a, a tax benefit. So we opened up the 501c3, which is a charity. Which is a charity and has been very successful in helping support these individuals that can't afford to buy a gun, buy training, or pay for their CCW because the process isn't cheap, Mike. You know that. You and I both yeah. and Alicia have our CCWs. Mm-hmm. And so purchasing firearms, even the ammo and the training aspect, like there's a lot of components that come into <laughs> getting your CCW to be able to protect yourself. Yeah. And a lot of individuals can't afford that. I mean, look at the economy. It's really rough right now. Like inflation's at an all-time high. And so people just can't afford it. And so we never want money to be a reason why someone can't protect themselves. Well, let's so, run through real so quick. Let me just jump yes. in, just a clarification. You like to wear your wig? No, uh. <laughs> but on certain occasions when you run into a, a young lady that's financially strapped, have there not been occasions where you will purchase a gun for yeah. someone? Yeah, we will. That's, that's, what, where, that's, that's exactly what we're talking about. Okay. The charity donations that's go towards okay, that. I just wanted to make sure I clarified <laughs> yeah. it. But let, let's run through this, though, real quick. How mm-hmm. much is a gun? Say seven hundred bucks. Seven hundred bucks. Okay. Give or take. Give or take. Let's Thinking say the fees and gross and you know. Yeah. Okay, all, so all eight hundred. So seven hundred bucks. Okay, let's mm-hmm. just say seven hundred bucks. Uh, how much is a CCW? What two fifty right now? I believe it's around. It's about two two fifty. Two two fifty. That you pay to the sheriff's department. So now we're up to nine hundred and fifty dollars. Mm-hmm. Okay. Plus. How much is a class? Eight hour but class would be about two hundred. They start at two hundred and go up from there depending on where you go. So at least eleven fifty. So we're up to mm-hmm. eleven one thousand one hundred fifty dollars. Correct. Just for a gun. Just for a CCW mm-hmm. uh, and just for uh, a, class. A, a class. Now, how much is a holster? <laughs> Let's just say seventy-five, to hundred bucks. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, right. So seventy-five, hundred bucks. We're up to like, ammo. What, twelve fifty. Ammo. We're definitely up to twelve, uh, thirteen hundred. Mm-hmm. Right. And then y- you can't just take one class. No, you have to take multiple classes. You know. So I would say. So really, if you like starting from scratch, a woman says, "Hey, I want to be able to defend myself." You know. Uh, wh- wh- what do I got to do? Well, you got to spend like two grand. Yep, and that's why it's that's that kind of funding is what we're looking for. Mm-hmm. Now, not every woman that goes through the program uh, do, we, do we spend two grand, but so there's a big announcement, right? Do we do it on the other side of the break? We're gonna do it on the other side of the break. You're gonna let's, have to. Let's right. leave them hanging. Know how I feel about our current government and financial system, so it's no secret I'm a big believer in diversifying your money with precious metal like gold and silver. But when it comes to buying precious metal, you need the right company in your corner. That's why we partnered with the top-rated precious metal company, Goldco, because reputation matters. Goldco is a six times Inc. 5000 winner, 2022 Company of the Year, and they've helped people like you and me place over $2 billion in gold and silver. And right now, they're offering gun owner radio supporters up to $10,000 in bonus silver when opening a qualified IRA account. This is your opportunity to protect yourself from our out of control, corrupt government. Hmm. Don't pass it up. Grab your phone today and give Gold Co. a call. Take yeah. action today so you don't regret it tomorrow. Call Gold Co. at 855-612-6354. That's 855-612-6354. And tell them you heard about it right here on Gun Owners Radio. Yeah, we talk about all kinds of metal. Gold, silver, mm-hmm. copper, lead. Brass. Brass. We're all about metal. We're a metal show. Uh, all right. So, Desi, so we set up a bunch of context here. We, we did. You, you you came in and saved the day after we set I up a program the day. for women. Yep. We rode in on my white horse. That's right. Saved we, the day. We, there's, it's expensive, as everyone knows. I mean, you start yep. from scratch. It's expensive to uh, to effectively be able to defend yourself, not only have the tools, but have the knowledge and have the courage uh, to protect permit. yourself. Yep. All that other good stuff. Yep. And uh, uh, so we talked about that. We talked about how we set up the charity to support the program. Mm -hmm. So uh, continue. Continue. All right. So let's talk about the evolution (laughs) of Not Me SD over the last couple of years. So what I've seen is a change in the amount of women and who actually apply to Not Me SD. So originally when we first started, I saw a lot of women, of course, who were victims of domestic violence and sexual assault that were reaching out to us looking for help. But what we also see and have come to see a lot over the years is women just want to start somewhere and they don't know where to start. And so, as you know, being a new gun owner, the biggest hurdle is trying to figure out where do I go to buy a gun? What kind of questions do I ask? And so a lot of women didn't know where to start. And so when they saw Not Me SD and what we offer, 
would sign up because now they actually have someone kind of holding their hand through the program so they can help them answer those questions and guide them along their firearms journey. Mike, you know that we get one shot to get a new shooter, right? Right. Once they walk into a shop, they had a bad experience, yep. Off, they're going to walk gone. out. Right. But if they have someone that's there with them to hold their hand through the process, it's going to be a much better experience. And as you know, when you walk into a gun shop, nine times, nine out of 10 times behind the counter, it's a man. And the way men, I hate to say it, talk to women, it's a little bit differently about firearms. Because what's good for me might not be good for you or good for Dave. So we need to know how to kind of balance those conversations. And so as we've seen the evolution of Not Me SD, we've evolved into really just kind of being a great resource, of course, for women who are looking for help getting firearms. That's our concentration, and I love it. And we've also kind of expanded into offering other types of classes. So we have a lot of resources at these different ranges, right? Like Alicia's done a pepper spray and situational awareness class for mm -hmm. us. We've yep. done a stop the bleed. And so we really want to be able to empower women with more tools to protect themselves, firearms being our focus, of course. But if we can utilize our resources at these different ranges and offer them at a discount, right? Like I'm never asking anybody to 100% donate their time. But if they can offer to us at a discounted rate so it's more affordable for people, that's what people like to see in the Not Me SD program. Nice. What's the most common? Is there like a what's the most common um, question or concern? Or, you know what I mean? Like when when you talk to women when when they come to us or when they reach out or whatever. What's what's the most common? Like you know, hey, this is what I need. What kind of gun do I buy? Yeah, that, that's that's, the, that's, that's what I was thinking. I was gonna say that's, that's the most common question is what gun do I buy? And that's why our shooting socials are such a great introduction because you don't have to have a gun ahead of time, right? Like we do everything for you. And so it's a great way for them to come in and shoot different types of firearms just to figure out what they want. I think that's a, that's, a, you know what that is? <clears throat> that's kind of the difference between someone who is, is it goes into it as a hobby or an interest. Uh -huh. Yeah. They grew up on comic books and eighties movies or whatever. And right. I, Cause I knew, I knew the gun I was going to buy first. Like there was no question. It Who was, was it? just, Glock 19. <laughs> I had, I knew I was going to go Glock 19. There was no question. Um, and then uh, that was 1997. Um, and I, you know, spent a couple of years. I just turned 21, spent a couple of years, knew this guy who had one, you know, read the Punisher, whatever, you know, I knew it was going to be a Glock 19. But people, men or women, who think to themselves, you know, they, they come at it more as a utility. Like, mm -hmm, hey, I need to mm -hmm. defend myself. Their first question is usually, well, what, what, what kind of gun what, do I yeah, buy? Yeah, what do I buy? Like, yeah. I, I need to defend myself. Which which gun is that? And everybody's response is going to be different. What I say could be completely different than what you say, than what Dave's going to say, and what Alicia's going to say. You're, so you're going to mm -hmm. get four different answers. And so you always want to shoot your gun before you buy it. So that way you can make sure you can handle the recoil if it's comfortable in your hand, and you can shoot it accurately. But I think that difference also speaks to part of the success of, of Not Me. Correct. In that, for years, I watched men say, oh, look... Just show them it's fun and make it pink. And then women make will. Make mine teal. Or, yeah. You know, I'm, you know, I don't know any. Shrink it and pink it. I, yeah. Shrink yeah. it and pink it. <laughs> I don't know any women who are out there going, gosh, I don't really have a lot on my plate. Sure could use more hobbies. Like that's not, you know I what mean, I mean? Gun hobbies are fun hobbies. You know what a lot of women come to me with when they didn't know what to buy and they let someone. They say their husband let them buy it. A revolver. Yeah, they get, they a come up with a revolver. They, do. Yeah, they come yeah. up with a revolver. So they, the concept and the idea of a semi-automatic is a little bit overwhelming when yeah. you don't understand it. And so they think, you know, less maybe parts. They can't you know, a revolver, revolver, they can't revolver can't right. sometimes they can't. They can't you know, a revolver can be a great fit for some people, but it's not for everybody. And they just come in not knowing anything, and that's what they come in with. And so, 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 a woman calls up and says, "What, what do I mm -hmm. buy? What? How do you? What do you do?" We, I mean, there's so many different questions that you can ask, and that's one thing about having a great ambassador is they're very knowledgeable and knowing what kind of questions to ask. It's like, do you want it for home defense? Do you want it for self defense? You know, I always ask kind of like like their size, like, are they tall like me? Because what I like might be a little bit different than someone that's a little bit shorter than me because my hands are a little bit bigger, right? So there's so many questions that go into helping them figure out what kind of gun they want for the reasons, et cetera, but then getting them to arrange so they can shoot it. It's kind of like number one priority. And we talk about number one priority. So kind of like how we were talking about the buildup, right, in the last couple of years. So every hundred was a new milestone for us, right? So we started with 200, then we went to three, we got to five, we got to seven, we got to eight. And then at about... Six months ago, we got to 900. Oh. I know. So I was like, well, we've got gun prom coming up. So is there any way that I can get to 1,000 by gun prom? Because that would be such a cool announcement. We'd be able to say we have 1,000 at gun prom. Well, now gun prom is just a week from, say, it's almost, it's like two weeks away. I know. So how are we doing? Do we need a drum roll? We can have, can we get a drum roll? We can is get there a drum, a drum roll? roll? 
If he's listening. He's not listening. Brandon. It's okay. So <laughs> he's taking a nap. A month napping. ago, yeah. we had our first of two milestones. So okay, we hit 1,000 applicants for Not Me SD. 1,000 applicants for Not Me SD. 1,000 applicants. Applicants mean those are women who... Who have applied to the program saying, yeah. I want help buying a gun. I want help finding an instructor. And I want help getting my CCW. That was a huge milestone for us. Yes. Huge Congratulations. milestone. Congratulations. That's awesome. Now, as we kind of look, I mean, it's been about 30 days since we hit that milestone. Yep. Since then, I've been on KSI promoting it, of course, mm-hmm. and we've been talking about it a lot and kind of, you know, talking about this huge milestone. And so we've been getting a lot more inquiries. And as I started to see these, you know, of course, we usually have a good ratio between open to closed cases. And mm-hmm. as I was kind of going through them over the weekend, I started looking at the number of closed inquiries going up and it started getting closer and closer to being at that thousand closed cases. So I'm on the edge of my seat. You should be on the edge of your seat at this point because this is going to be What's going to happen? What's happened is we've now had a thousand (laughs) applicants go through the program. That means we have helped 1,000 women purchase a gun, find an instructor, or apply and get their CCW. So that is a thousand more women in San Diego that are now safer because of not me. A thousand women since when did we start it? 2019. So what are you doing now? Where's 1,500? That's our next milestone. (laughs) We're done with a thousand. Let's move on. But even honestly, so it really, it was 2019, but again, that first year. That first year was rough. It was rough. It was rough. I was there the first year. She was there the first year. Maintain. So really it was, it's... uh, since 2020. It's really three years, thousand women. Thousand really women. Better. So congratulations. Thousand women we have armed and empowered with the tools to protect themselves. Nice. But our work is here has just begun, Mike. You know yes, that. There's 3.5 million people in San Diego. And who, let's say half of those identify as women. So there's still a lot of women out there who need our help. Not all of those women out there are gun owners like Alicia and myself. And so we want to empower as many women as we can with the tools to protect themselves because if I can help just one more person, that's one more person that's safer because of not me SD and the work that we do. Amen. So let me ask a question. What if I contact, because I think I just did today when I contacted a lady that was on the show, mm-hmm. on my motorsport show, and we, she already shoots. Mm-hmm. And I told her, you know, I think the ace in the hole was, I said, would you like to get a CCW? And she says, well, it's way too too difficult. I said, not well, too that, difficult. I said, well, that's where you're wrong. Not difficult enough. Right. I said, what, <laughs> you, need, I said, what you need to do is hook up with this group, yada, 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 yeah, yada. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think the key to this is getting the word out. Correct. And that's the hard part. It is the hard part. <laughs> I mean, I can only go on KUSI so much and let well, Tommy let about, me talk about. What about what? 8, 10, 39, and Fox? We have haven't. You, have you reached out to we them? We haven't reached out to them. So that's what I would do. I would reach out. And now the KUSI is underneath the Fox umbrella. Well, it's actually uh, North uh, Next Star. And Next Star it comes out, CW6 is coming into the building. Right. It's going to be a while because they're going to gut the place and redo it. So, ah. But I would go to just go to their websites. There's always a planner right. on there, you know, if you have an idea. If you have an idea or something you want to promote. And I would, because that's what I would do. I think once you get to those other stations, and yeah, you might say they're more liberal. But you'd be surprised how many liberal ladies would like to have like a gun. Like to have a firearm, right. And you don't have to go through the full program with Not Me SD. <laughs> no, 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 like no. Dave. So to your point, because your friend already has a gun, if she just wants to learn how to apply for a CCW, right. I do virtual CCW courses every two months where we actually walk women through the process on how to apply for your CCW. So I'm breaking that perception of it's too difficult. I can't get my CCW. So even if they already own a firearm, they're right. just looking for additional resources. We have those resources at our fingertips, and right. we are here to recommend that so that way they have them. So you'll get a kick out of this. They just got married seven years ago, and he made this big deal. She had to go through all these boxes to get to the to the wedding ring. Hmm. So she did kind of the same thing. But for her gift was gun training ah. for her husband. That's awesome. Which I thought it was, too. So I'm just saying – just got to work on getting on the websites. and, and That's the other about. thing, Dave, is, is you know, I, I don't know. Maybe she's ton, done a ton of training. But just because she's owned a gun. Oh, no, no, no. She need, she even said she needs more training. Yeah. So yeah. so even if you've owned a gun yeah. for five, ten years or whatever, I'll bet you haven't taken enough training. And, oh, and if you, So if you need train, more train, training, train some more. you need more CCW, or you need a CCW, you need some more training, go through Not Me. So it's, it's not just for people no, who I don't agree. have a gun. And I would, but she never gives me any cards like you do. Oh, I I'll was like, I card. give you plenty of cards. <laughs> I know. I've already burned through them. 
Well, congratulations, Daisy. Yeah, That's absolutely. Awesome. Great news. Are you going to be at Gun Prom to talk more about this? I'm, I might be. Let me check my schedule. <laughs> no, you better be. <laughs> you need to wear You hesitated. A, I just got nervous. <laughs> you need to wear a placard, you know, one of those things. On that the says a thousand? A banner? A me, banner? Let me tell you how to get a CCW for free. I, I'd rather just wear a pretty dress. That would dress. be hilarious. I'd rather That's just wear a pretty idea. dress. It no. is a prom. No, I'm not wearing a sash that says a thousand and <laughs> no, gun prom. No, not a sash. A, a par- cardboard a no, back and no, front. No, it's going to take away from the prettiness of my dress. Hey, what's what's more important? My dress. <laughs> Dave. Her and, uh, it's like Dave just met a woman for the first time right now. Aw, <laughs> you're so cute, Dave. <laughs> well, what we'll do, okay, then we need to find some girl that can wear a placard on the front and the back. Ask me how to get a free CC. And don't I'll make an ambassador do it. And wear some sensible shoes that night, will you? Thanks for watching this clip from Gun Owners Radio. If you're watching mainstream media, you're not getting the truth about guns. Gun Owners Radio is the easiest way to stay on top of the Second Amendment fight, the fight for your self-defense rights. You can watch our live stream on YouTube every Sunday from 4 to 6 p.m. California time, or if you're in San Diego, AM 1170, FM 961, The Answer. We're also available on your favorite podcast platform. Just search Gun Owners Radio and you'll find our show. Like and subscribe to help defend and restore the Second Amendment, not just in California, but across the country.